Father, we thank you. We give you the praise in Jesus' holy name. Lord, this morning we are here gathered before you. Speak to us clearly. Lead us by your word. Feed us by your truth. At the end, let no one here suffer misdirection. Let no one's destiny crash in Jesus' holy name. And if you truly believe your amen will be louder, you may please be seated. Praise the Lord. I am found on the covenant highways of life. Congratulations. You look at your neighbor and say, Congratulations. Look at another neighbor and say, Congratulations. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Continue our series of teaching, Understanding the Wonders of Divine Direction, Part 2A. Understanding the Wonders of Divine Direction, Part 2A. Now, it's important for us to note very clearly, divine direction simply means God leading man to his preordained destination step by step god leading man to his preordained destination step by step there is a place worth going but you can't jump there you have to step there taking steps deuteronomy 32 verse 9 down to 15 where he found him notwithstanding the most important is that he led him he led him about Deuteronomy 32 9 to 15 for the lost portion is his people jacob is a lot of his inheritance he found him in a desert just like many of us are and in a waste howling wilderness he led him about he instructed him he kept him as the apple of his eyes as an eagle stared up her nest fluttered it over her young spread it around her wings take them up bear them so the lord alone did lead him and there was no strange god with him what happened to him he made him to ride upon the high place of the earth that he may eat the increase of the field and he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock butter of kind milk of sheep fat of lambs ram of the breed of basham goats with the fat of kidney of wheat and thou did drink the pure blood of the grape you will drink the pure blood of the grape this morning he found him in a desert so where you are now might look like a desert allow god to lead you tap your neighbor say allow god to lead you number two divine direction is god showing man the way to go to arrive his prepared destiny. Divine direction is God showing man the way to go to arrive his prepared destiny. Prepared destiny. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 to verse 10. Jeremiah. He says, son of man, that the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah before I formed thee I knew thee before thou camest forth from the womb I sanctified thee and I ordained thee to be a prophet to the nations ah he said ah Lord ah, me like this I'm a child though. for what I can't speak but the Lord said to me say not you a child thou shalt go to all thee that I send thee and whatever I command thee that shall thou speak be not afraid of their faces for i am with thee to deliver thee say the lord verse 9 and then the lord put forth his hand in my mouth and touched my mouth and the lord said to me, behold i have put my mouth my word in your mouth go forth see i have this day set you over the nation over the kingdoms to root out to pull down to pull down to destroy to build and to plant verse 11 moreover the word of the lord said to me hey after all said and done what can you see i see the rod of an amor to say hey you have seen well i will hasten my word to perform it god will hasten his word for you 
brothers and sisters, it's important for you to know that whenever God goes with you, you don't stumble in life. Whenever God goes with you, you don't stumble in life. Whenever God goes with you, you don't stumble in life. Whenever God goes with you, you don't stumble in life. And I like to say this in addition to that, God guides us by instructing us. God guides us by instructing us through his word. If you go the way of God's word, you don't stumble in life. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 10 to 15. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 10 to 15. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led you in the right paths. When thou goest, want to read, thy step shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shall not stumble. I thought you say, amen. amen. Now, how will I lead you? Take fast hold of instruction. Let he, let he not go. Keep her. Let her not go. Keep her. For she is thy life. Enter into the part of the enter not into the part of the wicked and go not the way of evil men. Verse 15 together. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. From today, you will avoid the way of the wicked. I say you will avoid the way of the wicked. Listen to this. Man is not qualified to lead himself. No matter his age, experience, and expertise. Man is not qualified to lead himself. No matter his age, experience, and expertise. In fact, your stage notwithstanding. Man cannot help man. Hmm. Psalm 60 verse 11. Send us help because vain is the help of man. Second Kings chapter 6, 26 and 27. Man is not qualified to lead himself. As the king of Israel was passing by the wall, they cried a woman unto him saying, Help my lord, O king. And look at what the king said to the woman. If the Lord do not help thee, want to go, when shall I help thee? From the barn floor or out of the wine press? If the Lord cannot help thee. Jeremiah 10, 23. Huh. Oh Lord, I know that the way of a man is not in himself. It is not a man that walketh to direct his steps. I know. The earlier we come to this reality, the better for us. Listen to this. The reality of divine direction is in acknowledgement and acceptance of the need to be guided. The reality of divine direction is in the acknowledgement and acceptance of the need to be guided. I need guidance. I can guide myself. You have to acknowledge. You have to accept that you need it. Psalm 84 verse 14. Psalm 84 verse 14. Is that Psalm 84 verse 14? I have to acknowledge. Come on, say I acknowledge. I can't guide myself. I can't lead myself. Say again, I can't guide myself. I can't lead myself. For the Lord is a son and a shield. The Lord will give peace, grace and glory. No, not there. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, say, I can't guide myself. Say it again. I cannot guide myself. Say it loud and clear. I cannot guide myself. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Psalm 48, verse 14. 
Come on, say, I cannot guide myself. Say again, I need guide. Everybody want to read. For this God is our God. For how long? He will be our guide. Even so even as a plan of death, it is God that will guide you until you die. So you can't mature. You can't grow. You can't come to the point where you are not self-sufficient. I am not an expert in leading. I know always. Listen to me. You might know always, but you don't know all days. You might know the way to travel from here to Calabar, but you don't know what tomorrow holds. That's it. You might know the route, but you don't know the worth of the day. Tomorrow is Monday, as you know. That's date. Do you know the content of tomorrow? Yeah. Psalms, um, Matthew 6, 34. Have you read Matthew 6, 34 before? That's why when you read Matthew 6, 33, you just stay there. Don't go to 34. One, two, go. Take no thought for the day. No, don't go to 33. Just go to 34. That's the end. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. Why? <laughs> for tomorrow, we take thought for itself. One, two, go. Sufficient unto the day. Do you know the evil of tomorrow? You only know the date of tomorrow. 11th of September. You know, remember September 11th. Remember September 11th is tomorrow. How many of you remember September 11th? Uh -huh. It is tomorrow. But nobody thought that World Trade Center could be disastered. They only know the date. So you can't brag. Abba, you know how old I am? I'm 67 years. But tomorrow, you have never lived in tomorrow before. We are all entering tomorrow together. Whether 67, 17, 19, 11, two months. We are all entering tomorrow together. Nobody has experience of tomorrow. Say, I hear. Nobody has experience. So nobody say, hey, hey, you know who I am? Excuse me, sir. I know who you are, but both of us don't know what tomorrow holds. That's why you humble yourself and let God lead you. Say amen. amen. Sufficient unto the day is the evil. So the, the, the day is filled with evil already before you enter. So, in your natural sense, can you not be leading yourself? Naturally, if you hear this kind of scripture, you will not want to go to tomorrow again. Adi. That is how somebody come and tell you, I just dreamt now that you had an accident, so don't travel. No, you have to still travel. Clear the accident and travel. So that's it. <laughs> because if there's a plane crash now, so will you go to America by foot? You will see an plane, but you clear your own airways as you are going. Praise God. The accident is not for you. The death is not your death. He died your death. Tomorrow is full of trouble, so that means nobody wants to go to tomorrow. How many people want to enter trouble? That means tomorrow is not for you. That's what it means literally. That's why you need to be guided. The ways. That's why I say my ways are not your ways. Come on, say I'll be guided. Say I will be guided. So the moment you know this, you just acknowledge I need guidance. So I beg. I can't keep myself. <laughs> I can't enter trouble with my eyes open. Nobody naturally enters trouble with his eyes open. That would say the righteous man foreseeth evil. And he turned himself away. May you turn yourself from evil. Brothers and sisters, God always guides us to peace. God always guides us to peace. God always guides us to peace. Peace. Psalm 85 verse 8. And we hear what God will speak. The Lord will speak peace. I will hear what God will speak. For he will speak peace to his people. And to his saints. But let them not turn and enter chaos. Luke 1 79. Luke 1 79. To give light to them that sit in darkness. And the shadow of death. And to guide our feet. Into the way of peace. There is death everywhere, but there's a way he will guide you away from where death is. That's why I say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. <laughs> so there's death everywhere, death every day, evil every day. No day is safer than the other. <laughs> no day is safer than the other. Only God keeps you safe. Shout amen. Even though I walk, so uh, it's possible that they are prophesying wickedness, and I will just clear it and go your way. Just like every other place can be hot. When you enter, you put on your AC, you condition the air to be cool. Outside is hot, but inside is cool. There can be trouble outside, but there's no tension inside. When God leads, He leads in the way of peace. Isaiah 59 verse 8 The way of peace they know not ah, The way of peace is the way of divine living Isaiah 59 verse 8 The way of peace they know not The way of peace they know not They no judgment in their goings They have made themselves crooked parts Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace May you know with your eyes open enter trouble Listen to this God's leading will never end in chaos but in pleasantness. God's leading will never end in chaos. If God is the one leading you, His ways are ways of pleasantness and His path peace. Proverbs 3 17. God's leading will never end in chaos. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all our paths, peace. All come on, say all. Say again, all. So, if God is leading to marriage, there shouldn't be tension and trouble. If God is leading to a business, there should not be torture and trouble. If God is leading you through a path, there should not be issues here and there. You clear them. Come on, say we clear them. Come on, say we clear them. So you must know how to clear them by asking God for his leading. From today, God will help you. I say God will help you. Listen to this. Authentic guidance is from the almighty God. Authentic guidance. Answer of peace is from God. Authentic guidance. Authentic guidance. Authentic guidance. Authentic guidance is from God. Genesis 41, verse 15 and 16. Please, brothers and sisters, before you do anything, please go to God. Ask Him, whether loudly or quietly, but ensure you seek God. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have a dream. I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand the dream to interpret it. And Joseph didn't means words. Joseph answered and said unto Pharaoh, want to go? It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer. This week, God will give you answers of peace. When God guides us, he guides us to our destiny. Come on, say our destiny. Say again, God guides us to our glorious destiny. Come on, say God guides us to our destiny. Look at the life of Isaac. Genesis 26, verse 1 and 2. Uh -uh. There was famine. Naturally, he wanted to jackpot. He wanted to jackpot. And there was famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gera. And the Lord appeared to him and said, One to go. Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I tell thee of. Dwell here. Don't go down. Don't go the way others are going. No. No. So when God leads us, he leads us to our destiny. And one of our destiny is that we are redeemed to be a blessing. Not a burden. We are redeemed to be a blessing. Not a a burden. Look at the life of this man right now. You go to verse 14. And Isaac 
blessed. The Lord blessed him. <laughs> he had possession. No, go to verse 10. Let's start from verse 12. He sold in the land. He sold in the land. The land where God says, stay here. Stay here. <laughs> and the, the same year, received a hundredfold. What is the next point? And the Lord blessed him. What was the effect of the blessing? The man waxed great, went forward, grew until he became very great. Verse 14 together, and we had possession of flocks, possession of herds, great store of servants, and the Philistines, he was meant to be pitied. He ended up being envied. From today, those who are to pity you end up envying you. We have a destiny of blessing. Destiny of blessing. Not a destiny of burden. You are not supposed to be complained about in this world. You are not supposed to be explained about. You are so, supposed to be a celebrity in this world. I am praying again that no one here will end as a burden. I say no one here will end as a burden. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. That the blessing of Abraham the blessing Christ had redeemed us from the cost of the law be made a cost for us for it is written cost is everyone that hanged on the tree for what that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us I prophesy blessing upon everyone Amen. your labor will end with favor Amen. number two we are redeemed to be more than conquerors we are redeemed to be more than conqueror. See that in heavenly places. Just like heaven. Just like heaven on earth. We are in Christ. Seated in heavenly places. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. Ephesians. We are redeemed to be more than conqueror. And had raised us up together. And made us to sit together in heavenly places. In Christ Jesus, and this heavenly places is expansiated in Colossians, Ephesians 1 21, 20 and 21. Ephesians 1 20 and 21. He said, Who he wrought, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. What is in heavenly places? Far shout the Father above very loud. Shout it as if that's where you are going to right now. All what? And, 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 and what again? Not where, but also from today. Nothing will keep you under. That amen looks as if you are not even around. Romans chapter 8, 35 to 38. Come on, say, I am redeemed to be more than a conqueror. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril of sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Hey, nay, want to go in all these things? We are more. Done. Conquerors. Come on, shout it again. We are. More than conquerors. Say it loud again. We are more than In this current Nigerian economy, we are more than In the current financial condition. In the cost rising cost of fuel, in the rising cost of foreign exchange, with the prevailing rate of sickness and disease, with the rise of kidnapping and adoption. With the devastation in the system and the economy. We are more With the increased school fees you pay from tomorrow. We are more Come on, 
give you the shout. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you operate in this dimension, you can't be under. You are not redeemed to be under. Redemption is not reduction. No! You are not a substandard entity. You are not a substandard entity. It is not what is in the outside that makes you a believer. It is your content. Come and say content. My daughter came to me this morning and said, Mommy said I should stop wearing this, this thing. I should stop wearing this thing. I should not wear it again forever. Eh, eh, he said, Daddy, I said, oh, did you ask her why? He said, no. But, eh, Daddy, don't you think that wearing it will make me a Christian? I said, no. You are not a Christian by content, by, by, by container, by what you wear. It is what is inside of you that makes you a Christian. Christ in you. Not bangle in your hand. Not necklace on your neck. That is even when they strip you naked. Christ in you. Not Jesus Christ hanging on your neck. Not chaplet on your hand. No. Not scapula on your neck. Christ in you. The hope. He said we are not Jews that are outward. We are Jews that are inward. Romans. Colossians 1 27 to 29. Come and say Christ in me. So it's not by drawing Jesus Christ is good on your chest. It's not by tattoo on your body. No. To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of the mystery among the Gentiles. One, two, go. Which is Christ in you. The hope. Where is Christ right now? Whom we preach, warning every man and telling everyone in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus Whereunto I also labor, striving to this working, which worketh in me mightily. Are you aware that you are not married because of the ring on your finger? <laughs> it's not a ring that gets you married. It's just a symbol. If whether you remove it or not, if you are married, you are married. So, so, <laughs> so he said, no. Let me put the ring because so that they will not marry. Yeah, no. If you, if you don't behave married, we will not know. <laughs> to, to show in your character and your attitude. <laughs> Praise God. He said, now that you are in Christ, set your affections on the things above, not on the things below. Come on, say, set your affection. Colossians 1 verse 1. Colossians 3, 1 to 4. That's it. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 to 4. So it's not what is outside. Is the inside everybody together want to go if you then be risen with christ seek those things which are above where christ seated on the right hand of god set your affection on things above not on things on the earth why for you are dead and your life is hidden christ in god verse 4 loud and clear when christ who is our life shall appear then shall you also appear with him come on give jesus a shout it's nothing external it's only your character your behavior that is external i will not know okay this one is a believer ah no 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 this is it when they saw the boldness of peter and john they took knowledge of them that they, have, they didn't write bold on their chest they only displayed the boldness acts chapter one chapter four 13, 12, and 13. Ah, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived. When people see you, what did they perceive? When people come around you, what did they perceive? Neither is salvation in any other, but that none other name under heaven or not among them who should be saved. Verse 13 together, one, two, go. Now. Read it as if you're a believer. Somebody will take notice of you. Someone will take notice of you. So don't let yourself think that you're a believer by the things that are around you. You put, I am a winner in your car. That doesn't really mean that you are winning. Praise God. Those are just outward display to clear the devil. It has its own place. But the major content, the major is your content. Type your neighbor and say, your major. 
is your content. Tap your neighbor again, say your major, major is your content. But it takes being led by the Spirit to arrive at our enviable destiny in Christ. It takes being led. Romans 8 14. It takes being led by the Spirit. It takes being led by the Spirit to arrive at our enviable destiny in Christ. Why? Every decision you take is either to your advantage or to your disadvantage. Every decision you take is either to your advantage or disadvantage. Every, every, every. Jeremiah 2, verse 13 and 14. Every, every decision you take is to your advantage or to your disadvantage. For my people have committed two evil. One, they have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. Two, heal them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Verse 14. For my people, verse 14. Israel is a servant. Is, a, is, is, is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? He was spoiled because of the decision he took to reject God. My prayer is that no one here will reject God. Every step we take in life is either taking us closer or further from our glorious destiny in Christ. Every step we take in life is either taking us closer or further from our glorious destiny in Christ. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5, 5 to 8. Every. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your step. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Verse 8. It shall be held to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Be not wise in your Don't go your own way. If you go your way, you may crash. I am praying that no one will go his own way. What are the costs of misdirection? We look at Peter as an example this moment. Peter is our example. Galatians, Galatians chapter 2 verse 8. Peter is our major focus as the example of the cost of misdirection. He was sent to the circumcised, but he missed his way to the Gentiles. Yeah, where he was accused of hypocrisy. Peter went to the jail. For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. Peter go to the Jews. Paul go to the Gentiles. Peter went his way. Verse 11 to 14. Verse 11 to verse 14. But when Peter was come to Antioch, who sent you there? We withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Ah, ah. For before the setting came from for before the setting came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. What happened? And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him. In so much that Barnabas also was carried away with this dissimulation. Verse 14. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them, or oh, open rebuke, open correction. If that had been a Jews, leave it after the manner of Gentiles and not as do the Jews. Why? compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews. Peter suffered humiliation. Imagine what it means to rebuke somebody that is known in the public. You know how it feels. That was what Peter felt. I pray that no one will go the wrong place. Listen to this. Everywhere is goable, but not by everyone. Everywhere is goable, 
but not by everyone. That is to say, everyone shouldn't go everywhere. America is goable, but not by everybody. Antioch is goable, but not by everyone. Bumpa is goable, but not by everyone. Eket, Ikote Ekpene, Ikote Abasi is goable, but not by everyone. Lagos, Ikeja is goable, but not by everyone. Plateau Vaughan, Vandikia is goable, but not by everyone. Everywhere is goable. That's why anywhere you go, people are there. And they are surviving there. And they are succeeding there. Listen to me. That everybody is Japari does not mean you should Japa. Everybody is not jackparable. You can jackpa and, and that may be the end of your destiny. Be warned. Everybody is going. Does not mean you should go. Isaiah 30, verse 1 to 3. People are going to see greener pasture. But you don't find brown when you get there. Somebody is hearing from God now. Somebody is hearing from God now. That you have gotten the visa does not mean it's your own. Remember, I say everywhere is goable, but not by everyone. So check, I might be one to go. Woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord, that take counsel, but not by me, and that cover with a covering, but not by my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. What happens to them? They walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked of my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Verses 3. Therefore, shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. Say, God, I beg. They trust in shadow of Egypt for their confusion. May you not enter confusion. Remember what I said. Everywhere is goable, but not by everyone. Everybody, anywhere you go, you will see people. Everywhere is stayable, but not by everyone. There is a place you cannot stay. Paul was sent to the circumcised, to the uncircumcised. Peter carried himself there and suffered devastation. My prayer is that you not suffer destiny displacement. You are not saying the amen as if you are the one. I say you are not saying the amen as if you are the one. That does not mean you should tear your visa. Out. I didn't say you should tear your passport. No, remember, everywhere is goable, but not by everyone. You have to ask. He say ask, ask, ask. Lord, should I jump out to Germany so that I don't jump when I get there? Yes, you will jump out. You will, it will be great. And that person did not ask, he just went, he just jumped. Shout amen. Is your neighbor still looking at you very happy? But they want to go to Canada now. They want to go to Canada. Canada, Canada. You can calm yourself there. Canada, Canada, every prayer point, Canada, even when we are praying for church, go Canada, 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 and they are just that, 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 Canada, 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 Australia, 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 Hong Kong, Hong Kong, but you know, hang there. Can tell your neighbor, calm down and ask God. I, I believe that nobody wants to jump out here, anybody. All of you, go in peace. <laughs> and may the Lord go with you. <laughs> because that's the most important thing. You should go in peace and the Lord should go with you. Because if you go in pieces and the Lord is not with you, <laughs> in Jesus' mighty name, I pray that no one will embark on a journey of no return. Amen. What are the wonders of divine direction? Have someone been blessed? Number one, secure supernatural restoration. Secure supernatural restoration. Isaiah, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 8. You shall recover all. Recover all. Recover all. Recover all. Recover all. Number two, supernatural supplies. Luke 22, 35. When I sent you, did you lack? He said, no, how can we lack? Supernatural supplies and finally number three secures a stress-free 
life secures a stress free life psalm 25 verses 9 verses 12 and verse 13 psalm 25 verses 9 12 the meek will he guide in judgment the meek will he teach his ways what man is it that feared the lord him shall he lead in the way he shall choose so he's, there's a choice there his soul shall dwell at ease and his soul his seed shall inherit the earth so they say tell you go and ask from the lord god can also give you direction in what you choose but you must ask him that's the most important you must ask him don't lead yourself from today god will lead you all the way i say god will lead you all the way remember the covenant isaiah 58 verse 11 the lord shall guide you continually that's the bottom line that's the bottom line of divine direction it is continual not occasional it is continual don't just run without asking god the lord shall guide you continually and that is when he will satisfy your soul in drought and make fat your bones and you shall be like a water garden a spring of water i am praying again no one will hear the wrong voice you will not be guided by noise in the name of jesus christ today's a covenant day of long life no one will die young here i said no one will die young here psalm 91 verse 16 with long life will i satisfy you and i will show you my salvation brothers and sisters it's important for us to note very clearly that jesus has already conquered death for us in redemption Jesus, you can move the mountain. Our God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Let your light shine. Let the whole world see all the glory of the risen. First Corinthians 15, 53 to 57. Jesus, the come of the mountain. My God is mighty to say. He is mighty to say. First Corinthians 15, 53 to 57. Uh, Author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Let's read together one, two, go. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. For what? Quickly, to verse 57. Quickly, do that smartly. For this corruptible must have put on incorruption. This mortal shall put up immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, one, two, go. Death is swallowed up in victory. What happens next? Oh, death, where is thy sin? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? 56, 56, 57. Oh, dear. Thank you, Jesus. Number two, old age. Good old age is our heritage in the Abrahamic covenant. Good old age is our heritage in the abrahamic covenant psalm 16 verse 6 lines are falling to me in places and places i have a goodly heritage good old age genesis 15 15 that shall go to your father in peace in a good old age genesis 15 15 and abraham died at 175 in a good old age genesis 25 verses 8 but every provision of redemption delivers as far as our eyes can see how far can you see can you see up to 120 like moses or are you seeing 70 like david whatever you see is what you will see I am praying that God will give you right to see well. 
Genesis 13, 14, and 15, as far as your eyes can see. The question now is, how far can you see? What are the demands of the covenant of longevity? Number one, be born again. Be born again. Embrace new life. John 3, 3 to 5. New life. Because this life is called Zoe. The life of God, the man. This life that I have is the life of God in me. This life that I have is the life of God. Zoe, 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 Zoe. A life that cannot be killed. A life that cannot die. That's a life. Embrace it. So when you get born again, it's not just coming to the altar. There's a transmission. There's a translation. There's a transfer of life. There's, there's a, that the next change. Your mortality is taken over by immortality. Number two, stay in love with God. Stay in love. Stay in love. If you don't want to lose your life, stay in love. Stay in love. Stay in love. Psalm 91, verse 14 to 6. Stay in love. Don't leave God alone. Stay there. Be glued to him. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. What? He shall call upon me. I will answer him. One, two, go. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. One, two, go. With long life. Come on, say, I will love the Lord. Number three. Remain committed to serving God and the interests of his kingdom. Service sustains life. Remain committed to serving God and the interests of his kingdom. Exodus 23, 25. Don't leave God without serving God. Serve him. He will sustain your life. He will elongate your life. Number four. Build your faith against the day of death. Against the fear of death. Build your faith against the fear of death. You have little faith, you can't handle death. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. The threat of death is heavy. Little faith can't handle it. Job 3, Job 3, 24 and 25. Number 5, be committed to life, a life of joy and rejoicing. Be committed to a life of joy and rejoicing. Sorrow shortens life. Sorrow does what? Shortens life. Proverbs 17, 22. Mary heart doeth good like medicine. But a broken spirit dryeth up the bone. May your bone not dry. Number six. Be committed to speaking right words. Be committed to speaking right words. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. I miss praying. Keep speaking the right words. Proverbs 18, 21. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Finally, number seven. Whenever challenged, take up the name of Jesus against the spirit of death. Whenever challenged, take up the name of Jesus against the spirit of death. Proverbs 18, 10. I want to stand against every spirit of death right now. Whatever is challenging your life in the court of heaven, the name of Jesus against them right now. One to read. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous. Run to it. Will you rise to your feet and thank the Lord? The righteous. Run it into it and they are saved. Lift your two hands. I will live long. I will live strong. I will live well. Lift your two hands. I will live long. I will live strong. I will live long. I will live smart. I will live strong. I will live long. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. I will live long. I will live strong. 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 Akatoska, leke teke teka parada. I will live long. I will live strong. 
I will live long. I will live strong. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. I will live long. I will live strong. I will live long. I will live strong. I will live long. I will live strong. I will live long. God is the giver of life. God is the giver of life. God is the giver of life. I will live long I will live strong prophesy decree I will live long I will live strong Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is the covenant God has with us as the redeemed. Isaiah 65 verse 20. There shall no more there be an infant of days, nor an old man that has not fulfilled his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years shall be cursed. There is a life that is worth living. There's a life that is cost. Sin causes lives. Head bow, eyes closed. I am here this morning. I want to make it right. I want to correct my ways before the Lord. I want God to be the owner of my life. I want to live a life that is well lived. Put your hand on your chest. I want to make Jesus the Lord of my, the owner of my life. I don't want to live my life anymore to myself. Put your right on your chest. I want to repent of my sins. I want him to connect me to the correctness of his kingdom. Say this simple prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus. I come to you today. Your head is bowed. Your eyes are closed, everyone. I can't deliver myself and I can't elongate my life. Jesus, you are the prince of life. You are the owner of my life right now. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Forward ever. Backward never. Forever and ever. Today, write my name in the book of life. Erase it from the book of death. I shall not die young. I shall live long and I shall live strong. So help me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.